as you look back on your career so far, what has been maybe your favorite moment on the field? Okay, well, to loosen things up, because I've noticed that you guys don't ever partake of our breakfast. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast this morning, Coben? I had a cutie. I grabbed one of the cuties. Oh, you the did? Yeah, that's did, it? That's nothing that, else. That's all I needed right now. I'll okay. probably get some breakfast after this. Okay. How about you? I had a couple of waffles before I came. You did? Yep. Okay. Mango waffles. All right. Okay. Love it. So we're going to just do a little few like rapid fire questions for you. Obviously, football plays a big role in your family. Who's the better chef? The better chef? Out of um, us? Out of, yeah. You just can't say mom. Everybody. Are yeah. you saying our family? Yeah. Yeah. Or out of the two of you. Out of the two of us, uh, I don't, I don't <laughs> we, cook a whole bunch. Yeah, we don't cook a lot. Mostly, I like breakfast foods. So I love to make, you know, sausage, uh, bacon, eggs, yeah. pancakes, throwing some waffles there. But out of the fan, the siblings, maybe Rylan. Rylan. Yeah, Rylan. Yeah, Rylan, Rylan does a good a job. She cooks. Okay. The sister, right. the one girl. Yep. Okay. Who has the best moves on the dance floor? Trent used to be able to dance when he was a kid. <laughs> I don't know if he does it anymore, really. Yeah, I used but. to dance a lot. Uh... Emran, the youngest one, he has he has some good moves. This okay. this past year at our, our at our cousin's wedding, he was you know out there He's showing the our cousin on the, the dance floor and everything. They had they had like dance routines and everything. It was pretty fun to watch. Oh my goodness, that's awesome! So tell me about this dancing as a kid. Uh yeah, I grew up watching a lot of you know dance movies. You know, uh, Break In, uh, Step Up, um, Stomp the Yard, a bunch of dancing movies growing up. That uh, You Got Served was another one we watched over and over again. But a lot of, a lot of hip hop music. Uh, you know, listen to a lot of different types of music growing up. And I think I just, you know, let the let my body flow to the music. And I don't dance as much as I used to, but I'm actually in a dance class right now in college. I've taken a couple, but just learning about dance. But yeah, it's definitely some fun times. That's awesome. We're going to clear these chairs out here <laughs> after. And break dance, break dance. Yeah, break dance, break dance. Um, who's funnier? Me. Coben, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there was claim, no hesitation I claim, with I claim that. that one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, What's your best joke? Oh, my best joke? Yeah. I think more than a joke it's my sarcasm so okay. just in the midst of a conversation i can kind of say something that if you don't know me you're gonna think i'm serious but then like i'll have like my brother or maybe a close friend they'll kind of go along with me and like carry the joke on and then people don't realize i'm really kidding until the end and it's like that's kind of like my tagline of just doing messing with people like that so i love that i love that that is fun um who's more organized we're both pretty organized i would say yeah yeah he yeah. in our own ways so for the household type things like keeping the house tidy and mopped and swept and dishwasher everything. He does all that stuff around the house. Okay. Yep. But also I'm organized with the way that I just take care of my stuff. I should take care of the house more, but he does most of it. So my room, my stuff, my school stuff, everything else is pretty much put away in, in my side of things. Okay. You kind of keep to your room. Keep yeah. That I kind of keep to my little, like my section of the house, keep my corner clean kind of, kind of thing. I love that. I love that. And you did say that, right? Yeah, he he yep. claimed being the, clean, the clean one. Yeah, so I, that, I do keep my stuff clean. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, who has the better nickname? Well, I've always been T. People just call me T. Uh, okay. But he's like C Money, um, Cobe. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, people mostly just call me Cobe. And his nickname has always been T. I, I rarely yeah. call him Trenton. Yeah, it's weird if people so. call me my name. By my family, then I know it's serious. My mom calls me my name, but yeah, usually it's just T. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, does she ever use the full name <sighs> when you're in trouble, or is it just Trenton? There's been some times as a kid, I would say, yeah, where yeah she maybe his middle name too. <laughs> yeah, Trenton James, but yeah, you know, usually just T. All my cousins and everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. T. It is. We should have asked these questions a few <laughs> days ago, right? Yeah. Good grief. Um, what kind of music do you like to listen to, specifically when you're working out? Working, working out, I would say hip hop. Music. Yeah, okay. some hip hop. Um, but on over the years during our college, driving back and forth from home, I got into country a lot. So I, I've grown into country. Okay, favorite country singer. Oof. Uh, Morgan Wallen, Luke Combs. Um, there, there's a bunch of people. Keith Urban was somebody we listened to growing up. Kenny Chesney. So there, there's a lot of great ones. Awesome, awesome. Coben, what's your answer? Uh, I'm big into like rap. So okay. as much as I should listen to country music, it's kind of growing on me just because everyone around me listens to it. But when I'm working out, I think it's hard to listen to country music. So <laughs> rap, like hip hop, R and B type style. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Um, who takes longer to get ready? Ooh, Trenton, I, I would say. I can get ready uh, in like five minutes. I got to get my contacts in. I got to do all that. <laughs> he He's lucky to, to just wake up. He can see and everything. But yeah, probably, Coben's probably faster. Yeah, I can roll out of bed, get ready in a couple minutes. That's one of my skills. 
Okay. All right. I love that. I love that. Um, who can do more pull-ups, burpees, whatever exercise you're doing on the regular? I'd probably say him. He can put his mind to anything. I can probably go for a long time, but if it's us against each other, we'll probably, you know, go for a long time. He'll probably edge me out. But just yeah. barely. But yeah. I feel like I could I can try to outwork. You can just always as much do as, one more. I always feel like I can try to push myself too. So Yeah. But he's strong too. We're pretty much about the same build and everything, so it's hard. But Yeah. Yeah. What is your favorite exercise of choice? Like if you're like, Okay, burpees it is. It's um, my go to. Do you have a go to? I love squats. So okay. if we're doing barbell back squat, that's my favorite lift. Yeah. yeah. Squat's probably the toughest, but I enjoy it. It's probably yeah. just full body, everything, mental. Uh, that's what we did yesterday, but it, it feels good after. Yeah. So you're both in college. Who's smarter? Coven. <laughs> that's not one that I'll like claim, but I will agree with that because I've just always put school first. It's always been a priority for me. And yeah. Just growing up academics and everybody in our household has been getting straight A's as, as high as as long as they can. And then I've tried to push that for up until now. I have one more semester to try to finish that goal. So, I mean, it's just always been a priority for me. Yeah, I love it. Very, very fun. Okay, um, favorite candy? M&M's. I like Snickers. Okay. I saw there were some over there. I might get oh, some a little bit. We actually have M&M's and Snickers over there. Perfect. <laughs> I don't Perfect. know. That was awesome. We was totally planned? guessed. No. Yeah. I mean, yes, M&Ms. it was planned. A pre-game snack. <laughs> oh, Trey loves some M&M's. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. Um, have you always been so focused on football? Has football always been like your sport of choice or were there others where you're like, oh, if I could play basketball, you know, what, what, tell us that a little bit. Tell us that story. Yeah, I'd say growing up, probably my first love may have been basketball, um, but obviously just football kind of just took over and I played basketball all the way to high school as well. I was yeah. better at football, but I think if I would have stuck with basketball as much as I did with football, I think I could have been maybe just as successful, but I'm glad I chose football for sure. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Coben? I feel like football's always been the sport that I've been most comfortable with. Because growing up, like you said, we played basketball, baseball, all of these other sports. But football was the one that I always felt like was my like home sport, like main my main sport that I could fall back on. I wish I was better at basketball. I just couldn't shoot. <laughs> so, I mean, I always get teased by the family that I could go an entire game without scoring a bucket, but I could get 10 steals, 10 rebounds. I just couldn't score. So, if I could be better at a sport, it would be basketball. But football is definitely like the main focus growing up, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Awesome. Awesome. Um, as you look back on your career so far, what has been maybe your favorite moment on the field? And that's a question, you know, for each of you separately. College wise would have to be, uh, our win last year against a Washington. Um, that was my first really game getting in and, uh, came in off the bench in the second quarter as a high scoring game. They're ranked, you know, top 20 in the country. And, since we beat them, they hadn't lost until, you know, last week against Michigan. But to, to beat a team with the, that high caliber of a coach and great players all around, that, that was a big win for this program. Love that. Love that. I am still working to get on the field here. Uh, that's the plan for this upcoming season. But I would say just throughout life, high school, my junior year, which was Trenton's senior year, we played at a, a rival school in, in a Vail, Tucson area for playoffs. And he threw me a touchdown, about like a 25-yard corner out back of the end zone over two guys and it was just that was just a fun memory that I have all my family was there it was a packed game I want to say it was playoffs first round of playoffs too so it was, it was a cool night yeah awesome catching a pass from your brother yeah that's pretty that's yeah, gotta be awesome that, that was a lot of fun that year feels good feels good I love that um we talked a little bit about this already we you know when we were talking with your dad um he said that football's the greatest sport in the world and I just want to say specifically what he said i'm going to read it here and he said it's because everyone has a role and if you maximize your ability in your role you maximize the team's efficiency and ability to succeed um how do you guys feel about that statement do you agree with it and what are what are your thoughts on that yeah kind of how i've said it's kind of you know it's a great sport it's a it's a great metaphor for life you know everybody has a different position everybody has a different role in the team you know us and our family we have different roles within our family uh, but it's just definitely something you can, you know, connect to and relate to, uh, whether it's you're uh, you're here working, you know, different camera people or different news people or whatever you're doing in business. Um, there's always a, a role for you to do. And, you know, some people don't like their role, but, you know, you can work and, and get better at your role and help, you know, the, the outcome of, of your team. Um, but that's something my dad's definitely preached to us, you know, growing up. Yeah. Coben, what would you add? Yeah, I'll say football is just so much different from every other sport. Um, we have coaches preach to us now that 
you just do your 111. You're not worried about what somebody other what some of the other people are doing on the team, but you focus on yourself and your task at hand and then that's going to help the betterment of the team entirely. So, uh you don't have to do too much. You just do your part, do your job and then the success will come following that. I love that. I love that. Very very cool. Um so again, we've talked about this before, but you two are not the only athletes in the family. I mean, we've got four D1 athletes coming out of the same household. And I mean, we might as well just say six, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. Based, based, on, yeah, based on the little the ones. Um, but give us the rundown. What does life in a household like this look like? There's footballs and basketballs always be thrown around the house. You know, we have a basketball hoop in the house. So as soon as you walk in the house, a uh, big living room, with just there's a basketball hoop right, right as soon as you walk in. So you got to be careful of not getting dunked on or getting hit with the basketball <laughs> as soon as yep. you walk in. Um, outside, you know, there's a basketball court that, you know, is usually there's there's games going on all night. Uh, if you get tired of that, we have a beach volleyball net that's kind of in the backyard. So we'll get that going. Um, and then whenever we're in town, you know, we usually go to the park and we'll throw football, uh, you know, with me, Coben, Trayson, uh, Kendra and Emron will come, Ryland now, my cousins Lucy and Uriah, um, the Myers will come. So just, it's a big family affair. It's just, it's kind of like you're at a Olympic village. You just have so many different games going on at the same time. And it's just natural for us. It, it's weird for us to sit down and, you know, play video games for five hours or watch a couple movies. We'll do that later at night. But, you know, during the daytime, during the Christmas break, you know, we're, we're trying to stay as active as we can. I love that. I love that. What would you add, Coben? He missed that in the summer, one of the biggest sports, we play pool basketball. So we have like the, the shallow end that are in our pool at the house is we have basketball hoops on either side of it. So that's another competitive game that we get in just having fun in the backyard. So that's another thing. That's awesome. And um, I imagine that your weekends get pretty busy. Oh, you want to tell them about this weekend? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this week, actually right after this, I'm driving to Flagstaff. Uh, my girlfriend has a track meet up at NAU. And then tomorrow is our first uh, seven on seven tournament uh, for Tucson Turf, which is our, our youth uh, program. So we'll probably be there tomorrow from really we were just talking about we'll leave at 7 30 we'll get there at 8 a.m the last game's at 7 p.m so that'll be you know like a 12 hour 12 hour day and then sunday we'll probably be there for another 10 hours so probably like a 22 hour weekend um outside of just what we do here lifting and wise but uh that's what we do pretty much every off season is on the weekends we you know we give back and coach our, our program and but it turns into pretty much a 20 hour weekend and then we come right back monday lift and do it all again so this week we're here uh, next weekend we're in Phoenix and then the following week we'll be in Miami after that we'll be in Vegas and then it's just get into it but it's super exciting it's a lot of fun that's awesome so coaching all weekend yep. yeah yeah we'll be coaching all weekend all weekend that's awesome so for for the two of you sports is life is that a fair statement yeah I would say I would say like I said you know the, the three F's how we uh, we've always talked about you know our, our faith our family and our football in those order um, but yeah sports definitely has, has a big impact on that I love that I love that Tell me more about this um, coaching that you're doing. Remind me the name. Uh, Tucson Turf. Tucson Turf. Right. Okay. So it's a program that started with just my siblings and then a couple cousins because my dad used to play football, flag football. He still does occasionally with uh, one of his best friends and a couple other guys, but they started playing in college, I believe, right out, right out, right out of college. They were doing intramural, and they started doing national like tournaments and all that. And he realized that at these tournaments there were kids playing, and so by the time we were of age, maybe we were like five or six, he started putting us in the youngest age groups. And so started with just the family. And then now it's grown to over, I would say, 200 kids. over 200 kids now at least. We have 11 teams playing this weekend. Wow. And between Trenton and I, we try to coach as many of the teams as possible. But we have help from normally my dad. He's out of town this weekend. My brother, we have uncles coaching, really close family friends that have created some teams and built up some teams. So. The program is, has grown exponentially since when we started, um, but it's super cool to see from ground up how it's become what it is today. Just with Battle as a huge sponsor for us and then being able to travel the country every weekend just about for these tournaments, it's, it's something to be like blessed about and grateful for. So that's what, that's what giving back is looking like on our part. Yeah, I love that. Very, very cool. So you guys grew up in Tucson. That's where this Correct. infamous house is that's full of the <laughs> basketball hoop yep. and the house right. and the pool and the beach volleyball yes. and all the things, right? Um, U of A is in Tucson. Yeah. You guys both are at ASU in Phoenix, Tempe. Um, how do your friends feel? How do the fans at U of A feel? <laughs> what, what, 
are you guys traders? Yeah, growing up, you know, it's kind of funny. We we didn't miss a home football game for for the team down south for probably 14 years. You know, from the time I was born to the time I was 14, you know, we had our youth football games and, you know, we'd rush to to go tailgate, you know, for five, six hours, then obviously go to the games. Yeah. Um, You know, went to a lot of softball games. My mom's a huge softball fan. Uh, Obviously, they have a great basketball program. So we were just around the program a lot. Um, Once it got time for me to choose a college, you know, uh, they they didn't really have a spot for me there. Um, I got blessed to to have an opportunity here. Uh, the next the next week after they Arizona told me you know they had no room for me came here um both my parents came here so it's kind of funny that you know we're all we all ended up being Sun Devils one of my grandpas also came here and then you know Coben's been here and violence has been here all my friends and family you know they they cheer for us to whenever we're in or whatever they want us to do the best but obviously when we play each other they're ruined for us but um it's definitely been cool to see you know people that are such diehard wildcat fans you know they they still have that loyalty of just cheering, cheering for their friends their family um, but it's definitely you know made some things awkward here and there but it's awesome to see all the fame that used to never wear sun devil gear that's all they rock now so it's super cool okay so you've converted some people yes to, always converted a lot, a lot. Yeah, 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 a lot. A lot. i love that lot yeah love tucson that. sun devils yes <laughs> the tucson sun devils yep, a lot of tucson sun devils down there so. that's awesome well good job i guess right yeah um so not only are you guys extremely talented and i'm talking about the whole family here right but you have an amazing work ethic focus on family um tell us a little bit more about that obviously your mom and dad are the huge drivers of this right yeah i would say a lot of that just comes from our upbringing in in jesus christ and our faith with the way that our mom and our dad raised us growing up to church together doing everything together and having the right um focus in mind so doing everything as a family i feel like as a unit is just stronger and has a lot more commitment to each other so whether that's on the football field or maybe we're going to go as a family to the library whatever we're doing we're doing it together and we know that at the end of the day it's each other who we have no matter who's outside of the family and so i, I feel like our discipline and our, our drive for excellence just comes from our parents and how they raised us yeah that's awesome and your parents are you mentioned your dad plays football but they're both athletes right right tell us about that a little bit do you want to tell them about mom? Yeah, so uh, my mom, my my dad always says, you know, she's probably the best athlete. You know, we, we always say Rylan's the best athlete, but we say, you know, Rylan's my mom 2.0. Uh, but my mom grew up, you know, playing soccer and softball and basketball, um, played intramural flag football here uh, with my dad. My dad coached them and played with, together, you know, with co-ed. And that's how flag football got involved. And um, But yeah, my dad was a, a wrestler growing up, kind of how we are at football. That's how he was at wrestling. I think in middle school, he was like 150 and one or whatever. Um, wow. Won a state championship as a sophomore, placed all four years. Um, so we did wrestling a little bit, but that wasn't our forte. Nope. Don't um, don't. But he never forced <laughs> us to do anything, never forced us to play anything we didn't want to. Still doesn't force us, you know, to work out or anything, but he just knows, you know, that's what we want to do. So he, he's definitely, you know, put us in the right position a lot of times and let us just, you know, uh, travel the world, travel, travel the country and play against the best competition. Um, but yeah, uh, athletics has definitely been a part of something we've done our whole lives and um, but before that, we make sure to take care of business, and, you know, in school. And it all starts with our grades. And our parents have done a great job doing that. Awesome. What would you add, Coben? He pretty much hit it on the spot. I would. I don't know if there's much to add to that other than yeah. sports have just been in our life as long as I can remember. Yeah, I love that. Um, so for those of those of the people watching, maybe that aren't familiar with the family lineup, one of you give us the lineup, right? We've talked about Rylan and how she's at ASU too, but... What does the whole family dynamic look like? Yeah, so I'm the oldest. Um, I'm two years older than Coben and Trayson. So for a couple of years, it was just us three. Um, I still remember going to the hospital and my aunt asked us, do you guys think it's going to be a boy or a girl? And I said girl, and I think everybody else said boys. Rylan was born, so she's the fourth uh, girl. She's here at ASU. Trayson's at BYU. He's a quarterback as well. And then we have Kendrin, who's 14, and Emran is 12. But yeah, no, they, they do just as many sports as we do, if not more. Um, and then we have a lot of cousins around that their age as well. So they go to a, a private school and I think there's maybe 15 Borgays and Sewells and Myers and a cu- couple other close friends that go to there. So it's they're pretty much the whole school. Yeah, they, it's they run funny. the school. They run and, the school. Uh, but no, it's awesome to see how close they are because that's how close we are with our cousins our age. Um, so it's just cool to, to keep that, to keep that uh, dynamic going. I love that. Very, very cool. And correct me, Coben, you live in the same house as your older brother and your sister. Right. What's that dynamic like? It's been a little like reminding me of my childhood, just yeah. growing up. I've always had Triton. There's only been a couple of years where he was out of the house and I was still in high school. Uh, so having Rylan back in the house is something I totally forgot about. I mean, it's it's cool. We 
me and Rylan butt heads a little more than anybody else in the family, but I think it's healthy. I think it's good to just she'll keep keep me in check about things and I'll keep her in check about certain things, but she she's awesome about it. So it's nice to just have family back in the house because we've always had family friends and teammates, but there's nothing like having your siblings back in the house with you. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. And it remind me, what sport does Rylan play? Or she, what sport maybe doesn't she play? Is yeah, a high school. Question. High school, she played uh, indoor volleyball, beach volleyball, soccer. She's played flag football. She's done basketball. She's done swim team. Um, but now she she was doing beach volleyball, but she's decided to put that aside, and now she's focusing on flag football and trying to make the Olympic team for 2028 uh, oh in the Olympics in LA. So she, had, she the last four weekends we've had flag football tournaments with our girls team. They've gone four and zero. Oh. Um, just dominated and uh, just trying to, you know, get as much exposure as we can. And uh, but it's, it's it's a lot of fun coaching girls. I've loved coaching, you know, the guys I've coached Coben and Trayson and Bijan Robinson, who's at the Falcons now. Oh, wow. Uh, but probably my favorite teams are co coaching the girls. Um, you know, we have a girl that's at U of A softball, Texas, um, just a lot of great athletes, you know, in multi sports. But, you know, when girls get on the, the gridiron, they're, they're locked in, they're focused and, and they get after it. That's way cool. So you coach her team. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. I absolutely love that. Kind of shifting gears a little bit because you've talked about how school is so important to both of you. Um, give us a rundown. What are your, what's your major? What's your plan? And um, with that, um, what are maybe your goals for life after college a little bit? Trying yeah, I graduated uh, uh, last December. Um, I yeah. graduated with a degree in communications. Um, I hope to, once I'm done playing, to start getting into the coaching world. You know, I'd love to, you know, stay at Arizona State if I can. Um, but yeah, definitely just, you know, making connections with the right people and just, you know, uh, sharing my knowledge, but also gaining a lot of knowledge over the years from different coaches. So I'm excited to get uh, get a part of that. I love that. And I actually graduate this upcoming spring in with a degree in engineering management. And so the past four years have been a little chaotic, just busy with school and on top of football. But I've always been able to manage my time pretty well. And so I plan to after I get my degree, I still have two years of eligibility left for football and awesome. I plan to exhaust my eligibility if I can, if Lord willing, I can do it. And so after that, I would like to get into industry for about five, 10 years, kind of see where it takes me with my degree and the connections I have, because I've had two internships in the past summer with yeah. an engineering firm, a, a private engineering firm out here in Scottsdale with a, actually a, a local family friend and down in Tucson, his son is the one that is one of the three co-founders of it. So that's been an awesome experience, just eye opening and kind of get my foot in the door for the engineering world. So after I graduate and done playing football, I plan to get into that realm of things in the engineering field for a little bit. And then I really don't see it out of my future to come back and start coaching. So I always tell people when they ask that I, I can see myself going into engineering for a little bit, get a job, settle down, and then coming back and helping T wherever he's at down the road. So that's just one of the options I have. That's awesome. And that would be so fun. Yeah, right? a lot of fun, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're already coaching together. Yeah. Exactly. Why yeah. not continue it? It would be the same thing, just yeah. at a bigger level. Yeah. So tell me what it's like. I mean, this, we got to talk about NIL a little bit, right? Um, obviously, NIL is the reason why the three of us are sitting down right yeah. now having a conversation. Um, how, how has NIL changed the dynamic of maybe being a college athlete or has it? No, what are, what are yeah. your thoughts? I think there's, you know, a lot, of, a lot of great things. There's also some complications between things. But I think, you know, for us, one of the benefits is, you know, like you said, meeting you guys, meeting, meeting a great uh, company like you guys and creating relationships and making this a partnership, you know, where we're helping each other out. Um, but for us, you know, it's about using our platform, uh, trying to raise awareness, whether it's for a company or for a certain cause. Um, but definitely, you know, just make, making connections with the right people that are, you know, kind of have this, the same goals and want to use us as the same direction. Um, but it's been super cool to, you know, also link up with a couple, you know, local businesses here. You know, like I said, Burrito Express is, you know, a mile away, less than a mile away. But, you know, taking teammates there that have never been there before and just, you know, trying to spread the word of them. Um, Native New Yorker was one. Texas Roadhouse was another that throughout the season, we like to take our teammates there and give them a meal, you know, because one meal can go a long way. Um, but just trying to, you know, use our platform, like I said, and, and raise awareness of, uh, you know, just uh, the football team and athletes and just trying to do what we can. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Coben? Yeah. Just using our platform, like he said, to our biggest goal is to help those around us. So our teammates, maybe family, friends, we can take them to go eat. Uh, so certain deals come and it, we really don't accept every deal because if you accepted every deal, it kind of just be a little complicating just because not everybody has the same goals in mind as you. 
And so a company like you guys, we really align with just our, our morals and our ethics and the way that you guys do things. It's, it's really the way that we operate as a family. So it's pretty easy to, to link up and have a deal with you guys and then just kind of take it where it goes. Yeah. What are your thoughts when, um, you know, an organization comes knocking at your door? Um, is that pretty surreal? <laughs> I mean, it's got to be cool. It's got to feel good. Yeah. No, for you guys, like I said, it was like almost like unbelievable. I was like, is this for real right now? This is the Mountain America. It's That's on the stadium, stadium right yeah. now. I was like, oh, my goodness. So I, I called my dad and we were all on the phone. Me and T were in the house together. And I just remember talking with him about it. And he's just like, you guys have worked for this. Like, this is what. It wasn't a goal because NIL wasn't always a thing, but like this is something that's like nowadays a goal for people. Like this is something that's an accomplishment to be proud of, not to feel guilty that nobody else is getting it. Like it's deserving for whoever's getting it. So, I mean, to have a relationship with you guys now is just something that I couldn't even imagine a year or two ago before NIL was a thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, if you're going to give advice to some of these um, athletes that you're coaching, right? I mean, it looks really easy. You guys make it look so easy, <laughs> right? To to get good grades, excel at your craft, um, have a close knit family. I imagine it takes some hard work though. Yeah. You know, if you were to describe a day in the life, I mean, I, I mean, our, our whole team has seen it firsthand as we've spent some time with you. You're waking up way earlier than the rest of us um, to get those workouts in. Just talk, if you wouldn't mind a little bit about the hard work that goes into what you guys do. Yeah, you know, I would definitely say, uh, you know, simple cliches, you know, if it was easy, everybody would do it. You know, everybody talks about that. Um, obviously, Kobe and I both being walk-ons, you know, obviously we're grinding here. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, how great of students we are or, you know, we're not going to be, you know, looked at the same by, by certain coaches, by different programs or, you know, even here, you know, over the, over the years, we've definitely, I would say we earned our respect with the hard work, you know, like you said, you know, never missing a workout, never being late to a meeting, never missing a practice. Um, but just, you know, doing what we can to, to be the best teammate we can be. And I think that's something that my dad's always, you know, preached to us and my mom of just making sure to be, you know, Trent Borgay, Coben Borgay. It doesn't matter if, you know, we were here at Arizona State or Alabama or Texas or wherever, but just stri striving to be the best we can be and just, to, you know, outworking anybody in the, in the weight room, in the classroom, anything we do, it's competitive, you know, whether they say it's not competitive or not, um, but just pushing each other to be the best we can be. And Obviously, it's easier when you have your sibling there, you know, looking over your shoulder and he's over there grinding as well. Um, but, you know, we definitely push each other, you know, whether it's one more rep. You know, obviously, yesterday was a tough workout. Just me and him in the weight room with our strength coach, um, you know, at 5 a.m. But, you know, it's something that, you know, we would do without even blinking. And uh, it's just, it's been a lot of fun. But, yeah, like I said, it, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of work behind the scenes that nobody sees. Um, but, to, you know, to shine in the spotlight, you know, you got to do some hard work, you know, in, in the dark rooms. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Coben, anything you would add to that? Well, you're asking about tips for the kids that we coach or something that we would tell them. Uh, something that I would take away just from being in their shoes at that time when I was their age is surround yourself with a group of friends that are like-minded with you and have the same goals in mind. So mm -hmm. you don't want to be hanging out with the wrong crowd, but rather someone that's going to be working for the same thing as you because it's a lot easier to get that done. So if you're both trying to go play college football, work out with someone that's trying to play college football. Don't work out with a buddy that's trying to be a, a bodybuilder. Uh, work out with someone or do homework with someone that's in the same class as you study for the same test with them. I, I really did that in high school and I, I look back on it and that's what I, I tell my younger siblings is here's the way to do it. I mean, I've already been in your shoes. I kind of figured out what worked for me. So if it's going to work for you, this has already been set. I know it works and uh, just trying to give back as many tips as I can like that, that I wasn't really aware of at the time, yeah. but trying to look back and see what worked for me really well and trying to just pass that knowledge down. Yeah. Love that. Um, tell me a little bit more too about the order because yes right the order of things because i feel like you guys are so specific when i ask hey how are you guys successful and you always say it the exact same order every time will you will you expand on that a little bit do you know what i'm speaking to you're saying order for order for like your family your football right oh you're that saying, specifically you, you're yeah saying, so faith family football yeah the three f's yes. yeah so i'm like i said earlier growing up we've always been raised in the church we had grandparents that raised my parents going to church and so that carried down on to us and our cousins and our families we all go to church every sunday go to bible class uh do classes during the week yeah got confirmed in eighth grade and so that's something that we all take pride in and, and we carry that proudfully just shining our light in the world and as many people as we can touch with God's word is something that we cherish. Yeah. And so that being the the foundation of what we do every day, it makes it easy to just be a loving family with everyone and accepting others in our family as well. So we've made 
a lot of friends on this journey, whether it's sports or just school and bringing in as many people as we can with open arms. And then football is just a, a little cherry on top for what we get to do. Yeah. So it's not just football. I would say the football stands for all sports. Make it easy like that because we've done just about everything. And, and football is just a little a little fun we get to have on the side. But at the end of the day, it, it comes down to your faith and, and your family that you're surrounded with. So that's the foundation of what we've been raised on. And I, I'd say our parents did a really good job about that. And that comes from our grandparents too, the generations before us. So that, that's, that's pretty much the order of how things go. Football is not the most important Family, as much as people want to say, is the most is the, is the most important. It really is, and it's your faith in God at the end of the day. Love that. Very, very, very cool. Anything you would add to that, Trenton? No. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, any other advice or thoughts that you have for fans watching our interview together, our time together, for maybe athletes that look up to both of you? Um, heck, maybe even your little brothers. Right. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I would just say, you know, kind of how we've we've hit on it, you know, strive to be the best you can in the classroom. And and uh, that's kind of how we kind of always, you know, we weren't, you know, banking on uh, uh, getting a, a scholarship athletically. But my dad always said, you know, if you have great grades, you know, you can get a scholarship anywhere, you know, so really strive to get great grades. And that's kind of how we got our foot in the door here. Um, I've been blessed to, to get an athletic scholarship. Coleman's still grinding to get his. <laughs> Um, but you know, no matter what, you know, we still got, we saved a lot of money due to our grades and being an in-state tuition. Um, but yeah, like I said, j just strive to be the best student you can be and, and everything else will fall in place after that. I love that. Very, very cool. Okay. So you guys recently had the opportunity to come into our branch in Chandler, right? And sit down with some of our staff there. Do you want to talk a little bit about that experience? Yeah. So I had never been to Mountain America before and sitting down with a financial advisor, more like a financial coach, uh, just sitting down and really getting putting on the table what our goals are with our money and what we look for in the future with how we want our money to be used and you know having someone in our corner that I can trust and put my money somewhere that I know that it's going to be the best for me and so whatever my goal is down in the road the financial coach is helping me reach that goal so that's something that I really uh, look forward to with the Mountain America partnership. I love that well and that's something that a lot of people don't know is out there and it's free you don't even have to be a member yet to be able to, you know, meet with one of our financial guides. So that's, that's an exciting thing. Glad you guys got to experience that. Yep. And also on the, the app, it's super easy to look at the, the little tips of uh, advice that they have for financial coaching on the mobile device. So you don't even have to be face to face with someone. They showed me how to pull it up on my phone. So super easy to access and uh, little videos or just uh, articles to read about just through Mountain America's resources. So that's another thing that I really like from them. Love it. Okay, you guys, well, thank you so much for your time today. You have not got a question wrong. <laughs> Thank God, not you. We passed the test. You passed the test, yes. And, you know, obviously, best of luck in upcoming seasons, whatever that looks like, right? Whatever life yeah, brings your way. Thank you. No doubt that the two of you will be successful along with your family as we well. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you for you. having us on this. Yes, thank you so much. And thanks to all of you for joining as well. And we will see you on the next episode of Guiding You Forward. <laughs>